Welcome to week two for nonfiction writing. Uh, this week we're going to begin our writing exercises. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and uh, about some of the critiquing that we'll be doing. So our first exercise is due this week. The goal is to get it to me by midnight Saturday night. Uh, the first exercise is what I call a color story. Uh, it's actually a description. The emphasis is on description. And I think this is a very difficult thing to do. So we like to start off with it and sort of point out where the problems might be. Uh, I want you to write a story that includes a real, memorable place, a setting or an event, and describes what it looked like and how it affected you. You should be emphasizing details. If you decide to include a narrative thread, that is telling the story in a sequence as it happens, A, B, C, D, tell the reader when it happened, where it happened, what it sounded like, and if it's relevant, what it smelled like. Let's get all the details in there. To give you some tips on this, uh, I picked some really excellent um, examples of nonfiction writing by two uh, quite different writers from different eras. The first one is Passage to Juno. It's written by Jonathan Rabin. And uh, it's a story of a man who takes a boat and travels through the inner passageway uh, all the way up to Juno. And he has many adventures along the way and describes exactly what happened to him. And I would look specifically for the, uh, uh, the quotes that he uses and the, uh, the local language and how he integrates that into his story to bring it to life. The second example is from the, a different era completely. It's written by Eudora Welty, one of the most famous uh, female writers in the United States. Uh, starting in the early part of the 20th century. And she tells the story of uh, going out with her family for a car trip in the early part of the century. They're all uh, on back roads and, and uh, going cross country. So let's look for the details in that story and how she tells them to bring the story to life. So that's our first exercise in writing, focusing on description and telling a story and see if you can get enough details in there to really capture what was going on. Also this week we'll be doing critiquing for the first time. And I want to give you a little idea of how that's going to work. Essentially what we'll do is you'll send me your work and I will post it on the Moodle website. Then you'll go in there and pick out an exercise and uh, I will assign one to you. And you will be asked to uh, comment on that particular exercise. Uh, you can also comment on as many as you'd like. So, but be sure to do the one that you're assigned to. Specifically, the, the uh, instructions on how to do this appear uh, in Moodle under Assignments. After 3 p.m. Sunday on the Moodle site, you will be assigned a specific piece to read and critique. You need to follow the instructions and add your specific constructive criticism directly into Moodle as indicated. The deadline for this work is uh, by midnight the following Monday. And you may, as I said, critique as many assignments as you like. And one of the great virtues of this course is feedback. It's very unique and, and very unusual for a writer to actually uh, see how his or her work is being interpreted and whether or not you're actually communicating the things you think you are. So you'll be getting lots of feedback from me and hopefully from other members of the class as well. Now this is the first time we're going to be doing this on Moodle. So I'm going to walk you through uh, the Moodle exercise a little bit. Uh, the best way to learn this is just play around with Moodle. But let me just walk you through it so you can see exactly how it works. To critique uh, um, the pieces this week, you go to Moodle, go to week two, and uh, that's a little chart on the right side of your screen. And um, pick the assignment, Writing Exercises Critiquing. You see it there, it's the fourth item down. Click on that and it'll bring up this next page. On the next page you'll find uh, the assignments. The student's name, uh, your name, will be in the left column. And on the right column will be uh, what I call a slug. It's what I told you to do about identifying your piece. X, uh, X1 period and then your last name. So for me it would be X1 period Steinle. That would be my slug. And you'll pick out your one from the right uh, side of the, of the chart here. I'm using examples from the past, so 
we have past years and other students from the past. The one I picked out here is, is uh, a student named Brighton. So that's example one and the specific piece B. When you look down to the bottom of this page, you'll see that the samples are lined up. And uh, they'll be in no particular order. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, as you see the chart here, and this is on the bottom of the same page. If you scroll down, you'll find it. You'll see that uh, our example B is right down at the bottom of this list. Actually, the list is longer than this. I couldn't get all get it all on this page here. Moodle automatically reorganizes the queue as new critiques are posted. So your assigned sample may appear out of order alphabetically. Uh, so in this case, we're using example 1B. So we go down to the bottom of the page here, and we would click on uh, example 1B there. On the next page, you see this screen. Read the directions that tell you exactly how to do a critique, and then click on the example 1B doc. When you click on this slug, Moodle will automatically download this file, the file that has a piece on it, onto your computer. And it'll appear in your downloads column uh, of your files. And that way you'll have the entire piece to look at. These exercises can be fairly large. So it's a good idea to move the files around intact uh, and not try to read them off a screen. You'll have them and you can, you can print your own copy if you want or read it from your screen, whatever works best for you. When you read the exercise, then you'll decide how you want to critique it. I suggest what you do at that point is to uh, think of what you want to say, maybe take some notes, and then write a little file about it, a page, a half a page, a few paragraphs, whatever is appropriate, and make an MS Word file out of it, and then you'll have it. So it will be critique exercise one, and you'll be ready to use that to put it back into Moodle, uh, which will show exactly how you critique the piece. When you're ready to post it, you go back to the page that we just looked at, and if you look at the bottom uh, right side, you'll see the word reply. And this is where uh, you actually reply. You actually add your critique to the page. When you click on that, uh, you'll get another long page. Uh, I can't fit it all in this slide. And what you want to do is scroll down this page for the next step. As you go down the page, you see um, in the message box here that it's already identified that it's exercise B because you clicked on that. And at this point, it's possible to type in your critique if you want to. If for some reason that's the best way for you to do it, you can do it that way. But I would recommend that you uh, create an MS file of what you're going to say. And as you see the next step, you'll see why that works. If you go to the bottom of the page now with the next screen, you'll see it here. This next message box has a place where you can uh, drag and drop a file. So uh, if you've already created your file, I would suggest you put it on the desktop of your computer, and then uh, you can just slide your uh, file onto Moodle and it'll just jump right onto this page. And then your file will be in there and will be in a place where people can find it. In order to actually post it, in other words, for the computer to recognize it's there, you have to scroll down just a little bit farther. And at the bottom of the page is this orange box and it says post to the forum. What you're doing is you're creating a forum and uh, everybody who does this adds to that list of uh, pieces that are there to be read. So uh, this is your exercise. Um, I hope you don't find this too confusing. But again, I think if you play around with it a little bit and go to the page and work on it, I think you'll be able to do it. Also, everything I'm telling you is in the syllabus. I really recommend that you print out the syllabus and take a close look at it, because everything is in detail on there. The syllabus tells you everything in the course, when it's coming, and it enables you to pace yourself properly for this course. So that's this week's exercises. It's exercise number one, the so-called color piece or description, and then the critiquing exercise. Your exercise will be due Saturday at midnight. Then uh, on Sunday, about 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the exercise that you will critique will be posted on the Moodle website. And what I'm doing there is I'm taking the names off of them. And that's why we have this exercise 1B, exercise 1C, etc. And you'll just be working from those uh, slugs, um, which is identified to me whose piece it is. Um, I hope you will be able to do this without too much trouble. And I hope you'll have fun doing it. 
as I said before, getting feedback is really a valuable part of this course. So give as much feedback as you can, and when you do give feedback, make it constructive. What is constructive criticism? This is great work. This is not so good work. These are not really helpful kind of comments. If you do, on the other hand, say, this piece works very well because one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is, or the problem with this piece is one, two, three, four, five. By the way, don't worry about grammar or spelling. I'll take care of all of that in my critique of each piece. So you can just overlook that. Assume I will have created, uh, corrected that already for all of the students. I hope you enjoy this, and uh, I look forward to seeing your first exercises, the color piece. Mm -hmm.